In this video, I will use group theory to analyze the symmetry of several molecular orbitals in this molecule that belongs to the C4V point group. In this molecule, xenon is bonded to one oxygen atom and four fluorine atoms. We will focus on the interaction between the xenon atom and the four surrounding fluorine atoms. So mostly we'll look at the symmetry of the MOs uh, that are concentrated on xenon and fluorine atoms. First, let's look at this character table of the C4V point group. There are five rows and five columns. These five rows are five irreducible representations, all five symmetry species. And then you have five symmetry classes. And when you look at a character table of a point group, uh, it's always n by n character table. You have n symmetry classes and n irreducible representations. Uh, in some symmetry classes, like this one, this one, and this one, they have more than one symmetry operations. So if you count the total number of symmetry operations, 1 plus 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 2, that's 8. And this number 8 is the order of the C4V point group. Another way to compute the order is this, uh, 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 1 squared plus, 1 squared plus 2 squared, that's 8. And then multiplied by the number of symmetry operations here, that's 1, so 8 times 1 is 1. Or you can just use this five numbers, square them, and then sum up all those squares. You get four, four times uh, the number of symmetry operations. So four times two, you get eight. Same here, all right? Square them up, sum up the five squares, you get eight, eight times one, that's eight. So now let's look at the interaction between the xenon atom and the four uh, fluorine atoms. You can see there are four bonds. And now let's just look at the fluorine atoms. We will apply symmetry operations uh, to those fluorine atoms. So this E means, um, well, doing nothing. So that means uh, after we do nothing, the number of fluorine atoms in the original position uh, is going to be four. So uh, if we do nothing, all four fluorine atoms stay in their original positions. And then uh, we can do C41 operation and C4-3 operation. That means we rotate uh, this fluorine atoms about uh, this um, xenon-oxygen molecular axis 90 degrees or 270 degrees. Uh, C4-1 means 90 degrees, C4-3 means 270 degrees. When you do that, all four fluorine atoms move away from their original position. So you put number zero here. Zero fluorine atoms remain in the original position. Uh, what about the C2 operation, 180 degrees? Uh, again, all four atoms, fluorine atoms, move away away from their original position. So you put zero here. Uh, but now sigma V. Sigma V contains uh, two fluorine atoms, either this two or this two, because you have two different sigma Vs. So one sigma V contains uh, this four atoms. The other sigma V contains this four atoms. So uh, when you do symmetry operation with respect to this uh, sigma V element, uh, two fluorine atoms remain in their original positions. So either this two or this two, uh, depending on which sigma V you're looking at. And then sigma Ds. Sigma Ds actually uh, bisect uh, this two atoms, this two fluorine atoms, and bisect this two fluorine atoms. So you can imagine uh, this sigma D. One sigma D uh, contains this line and the oxygen atom. And the second sigma D contains this line and the oxygen atom. So uh, neither of the two sigma D plants contain any fluorine atoms. So when you do sigma D uh, symmetry operations, um, zero fluorine atoms remain in their original position. So that's how we got this uh, five numbers. They are the number of fluorine atoms that remain in the original position after a symmetry operation. And then when you multiply these five numbers uh, with these five numbers uh, respectively, so really uh, right here it's B11. So this is B11 times B1. B1 is this number. 
And all you need to do is, is uh, you just drag it from left to right. You get the products, five products. Okay, now given this uh, five numbers, this five numbers can be decomposed into uh, integer multiple of those irreducible representations. How do we do this? Well, let's uh, look at A1. One, 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 one. So these five numbers are the characters of A1. So we'll just multiply these five characters of A1 with these five numbers correspondingly. All right, so really uh, what I was doing is I was doing B$12. So this is B$12 times B4. B4 is right here. And then hit enter. And then uh, these five numbers multiplied by 11111. Actually, it's just, you know, 40040. And now over here, you can see we sum up these five numbers and then divide it by the order of the character table, which is 8. So which is 8 right here. And then you get the number of A1. So there's one A1. And then we you do the same thing to A2. So you can see uh, A2, B$12 times B5, B5 right here. Uh, but if you look at the characters of A2, uh, it's 1, 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1. So really, if you look at these two columns, uh, these two numbers should be multiplied by negative 1. So that's why you see a negative 4 here. Again, we sum up these five numbers divided by the order of the character table. So the sum of these five numbers divided by $g$1, which is the order of the character table, you get 0. That means uh, a 0 at most have this A2 symmetry. So if we keep doing this, basically we just need to drag it down here. We got these five numbers. And then you can see this number again. It's the sum of uh, these five numbers. Uh, these five numbers divided by the order of uh, the character table. So again, I'm going to drag it down here. Now you can see we have 0A2, we have 0B2. But we do have 1A1, we do have 1B1, and we do have 1E. Uh, over here, E, this E means WG generate. All right, so uh, when we have uh, this uh, uh, A1, B1, E, what are the shapes uh, of the, um, or what are the faces? Uh, of the electron waves on this uh, fluorine atom. I'm going to just use a uh, document here to draw uh, this uh, molecule. But uh, to make things easier, I just uh, draw a planar structure. Okay, It's a little bit difficult for me to draw three-dimensional uh, structures. So what I will do is I will uh, draw uh, just xenon here and then uh, four fluorine atoms here. All right? Uh, I will look at this molecule this way. And we should, uh, for now, just ignore oxygen atom, just so that we can focus on the easier interaction between xenon and the four flowing atoms. So first, A1. A1, totally symmetric. So you have four flowing atoms. Uh, if you look at the four faces, uh, they are the same. And this four... Uh, from the four fluorine atoms may interact with, of course, the totally symmetric S orbital of xenon. All right, so let's say this is the S orbital of xenon, and uh, you have uh, constructive interference here, and this is one of the bonding molecular orbital. Uh, of course, you can change this sign to negative, and then you have a totally symmetric anti bonding MO. All right. So uh, what about the Z orbitals, uh, PC orbital on xenon? Yes, it may also interact with the four uh, fluorine atoms. Uh, but again, I mean, you just need to have one of the two lobes of the, two, uh, the, the PZ orbital to interact with the fluorine atoms. All right. So you can still use this kind of uh, shape to uh, describe the interaction between the PZ orbital of xenon and the fluorine atoms. Uh, again, it's A1 symmetry. And by the way, uh, the PZ orbital uh, has a A1 symmetry. All right, The PZ orbital centered on xenon has the A1 symmetry. Uh, what about PXPY? They have the E symmetry, doubly degenerate E symmetry. So get back to this picture. Uh, what I will do is I will draw uh, this B1. All right, I will draw this B1. So if you look at B1, B1 is right here. Uh, 
the quadratic function x squared minus y squared has the b1 symmetry. So that actually helps me to draw uh, this uh, four faces. So again, four flowing atoms, all right? x squared minus y squared. So this uh, four flowing atoms may interact uh, with, of course, the dx squared minus y squared orbital of xenon. All right, but uh, in here, we're not going to worry about this because uh, I think the d orbital of xenon has a much higher energy uh, than uh, the um, electrons, the valence electrons uh, in the following atoms. So there's not much interaction here. So really, uh, this in this picture, well, if you have to uh, draw interaction, it's going to be between these four lobes and the d orbital of uh, xenon. But I want to remind you, the interaction is uh, very small. Uh, I made a mistake with the sign here. Okay, this is uh, constructive interference. Uh, and then this is uh, destructive interference. All right, again, uh, uh, this uh, is B1 symmetry. Okay, B1 symmetry. It can interact with the dx squared minus y squared orbital of xenon. But because, the again, the energy of the d orbital of xenon is much higher, uh, the interaction is going to be small. Uh, finally, uh, E. Okay, E, that means uh, doubly degenerate doubly degenerate, all right? And then there's a, a this picture. So uh, you can see there are lobes on the uh, uh, x-axis, but uh, nothing on the y-axis. It's just a node. So you're looking at the uh, fluorine atoms. Uh, it may interact with the 2p, uh, uh, the px orbital of xenon, all right, this way. Uh, this is constructive interference, and of course, you can just uh, change it, change the direction of the 2px orbital, and you have destructive interference, all right? And then, uh, since we're talking about doubly uh, degenerate orbitals, okay, you can also have uh, this positive on top, negative on the bottom for the fluorine atoms, all right? So you have a fluorine here, another fluorine here. And in the x direction, you have a node. And of course, this may interact with the uh, py orbital of uh, xenon, all right, of xenon. Uh, this is constructive interference, uh, but also you can just change the sign. You can change this sign to negative and this sign to positive, and then you have uh, destructive interference uh, between the 2py orbital of xenon and the uh, two flowering atoms, one on top, one on the bottom. So again, I, I drew actually uh, just uh, two-dimensional pictures here. I want to remind you, it's just XY plan. Uh, I did not uh, really uh, touch on the oxygen.